its uh, size. And then we look at the economic development of many other countries. How far are they behind the US and how long does it take for those countries to reach this theoretical output potential? And so if we look at the history of the last 60, 70 years, we see the first country that starts to uh, catch up with the United States, and that is Japan, that from 1950 until the mid-70s and 80s has uh, encountered a period of high growth that has uh, basically taken its uh, GDP per capita from what used to be 20% that of the United States in 1950 to almost catch up with the United States. So in a way, Japan from 1970 to 1980 has uh, fulfilled its goal of catching up with the US. Second country to do it was Korea. Korea took a little bit later because they decided to wait a bit longer to start economic reforms. So from 1960s, late 60s until 1990, Korea also caught up with the rest of the developed countries and caught up with Japan and almost with the United States. Third country, China, starting in 1978. Again, from 1978 to now, China, 9.5% GDP growth for the last 40 years, still not at the level of the United States, but still having experienced decades of growth. So you can imagine this curve shifted in time. We have first Japan, 15 years later Korea, 15 years later in China, and now we have India. And so what we have is the development India started 20, 15, 20 years later, that of China, and now we are seeing this 7.5%, 7 7% growth rate in India. And what we try to do here is to ensure, for the benefit of global growth, of global stability, that not only Japan, Korea, and China fulfill the goal of bringing GDP per capita, not total GDP, that does not matter. GDP per capita, because we care about individual wealth, not countries.